Yes, kicking us off with some weather news, some weather chat. We know how everyone loves it. The state is bracing for the chance of severe thunderstorms today with a hot Thursday morning before rain sets in across all of the state. Mm. So a lot of rain expected. Enjoy the heat while you can, but it could be one of those muggy days. Yeah, okay. In other news, in shopping news, hidden fees and deceptive online pricing. So a lot of the hidden stuff, especially when you look at things like concert tickets or events and you get those little fees that you kind of have to look in the terms and conditions, are being cracked down upon now by the Albanese government. They're looking at all of those in an investigation because it's just wild at the moment. A bunch of concert tickets were recently sold that were $40 more than what they were asked for initially. Oh, right. Really? Yeah. So what is a hidden charge? You say hit- the price and then when you yeah. get charged... So a hidden out. charge of 40 bucks extra than what you'd initially <laughs> think it is. So, I'd be so salty. Yeah, well, everyone was pissed off and now it's gone to the government. So hurrah, we can have a look at that stuff. Hopefully we don't get any more hidden fees. <laughs> hurrah. Hurrah. <laughs> That's exactly what the Albanese government said. <laughs> hurrah. When they're all in the office, I know they're pumping their fists. <laughs> hey, turning over to sport, the AFL trade window closed off last night with lots of last minute deals getting across the line uh, looking at the Crows they had a very busy trade period uh, inc- recruiting Isaac Cumming and James Peatling yep. Lo- James Peatling came through very last minute both from GWS and Premiership Demon Alex Neil Bullen Elliot Himmelberg has left, uh, but they've remained their picks for 64 and 82, so they didn't have to get rid of their best pick to get any of these players across. Good stuff. Looking over at Port, they finally got that deal they wanted, getting rid of Dan Houston. He has moved to Collingwood. They got Joe Richards from Collingwood. They also got Jack Lukosius and Rory Atkins from the Gold Coast Suns, Rory Atkins being a former Crows player as well, Wow, funnily yeah. enough. Interesting moves here. Yeah, so they held on to their picks 13, 29, 36, and 50 for next month's draft. And the other club I want to have a look, quick look at is the, the Western Bulldogs. They had they they lost a lot of players, a lot of good players. Yeah, so but they, he's gone. Bailey Smith, he's gone to Geelong. Caleb right. Daniel has moved over to the Kangaroos on a four-year deal. And Jack McRae to St. Kilda. So that's their midfield really looking tough now. Yeah, They've really dire. only held on to the bont. And a couple other young guns. They've got picks 17, 25, 35, and 40. Jeez, a few notable names that'll be weird when they're not on the team, like Bailey Smith not being on the Bulldogs. Yeah. Yeah, got to be an odd look. It'll be an interesting year next year, and it'll be a very interesting draft next month. Hey, Callum, I love Reddit, right? It's got yep. something of everything, from funny to weird to opinions to news. And it has so many users on Reddit that you can find almost anything from any part of the world. Uh, part of the world. Yes. So yesterday I was scrolling through Reddit and I found an Adelaide-specific Reddit thread. These are the life hacks you should know if you live in Adelaide. Life hacks. The red light at Krispy Kreme means you can get a free donut. Life hacks. Get to know Adelaide's 24-hour food scene, Cafe de Villiers, or the O'Connell Street Bakery. Life hacks. Good one. Adelaide has pretty hard tap water. If you start to have dry, itchy, flaky spots on your face or skin, dandruff problems, try Nizoral shampoo. Life hacks. You should be picky when dating. If you date one person and it goes badly, they'll most likely know or related to the next person you date, and then it gets weird. Life hacks. Adelaide Libraries use one card system, meaning you can rent a book, DVD, CD from any library and return it to another library. There you go. Life hacks. Eight dollar Guinness and kill Kenny pints at Finn McCall's. Life hacks. Don't use South Road. Life hacks. You often get good deals on produce at the central market about an hour before closing. Life hacks. There Jeez. you go, Adelaide. Some of the life hacks if you live in Adelaide are uh, some some of just the ones on the Reddit thread. If you've got any good life hacks for living in Adelaide, text them through to us, 0428 927 927. See, I love that. They're a little bit obscure, and then you get the one, use the shampoo. Use the specific shampoo if you get dry skin. What the hell? Go I might do actually it. look into yeah. that. <laughs> As Australians, we all love a Stephen Bradbury moment. Oh, absolutely. Absolute legend of Australia. Yeah. Uh, ingrained into pop culture for eternity. Well, it's such a weird thing. Imagine winning a gold medal one, but then also having your name, first and last name, become a verb that people use for, what, almost 25 years, like, passes happened. Yeah, so if you don't know the Stephen Bradbury story, 
basically what he did was he, he was uh, speed skating. Yes. He was kind of in the in at the air, back of the pack. I think he was dead last, mm. actually. And everyone in front of him had a big crash, and he just skated on past willy-nilly, won the gold medal. Yep, great stuff. Everyone replays it. Everyone talks about it. One of the best Olympic highlight moments behind Ray Gunn, of course. <laughs> but we experienced our very own Stephen Bradbury on the radio yesterday when we were playing. It's Wheelie Wineback Wednesday. What yep. social media was invented in 2004? Facebook. Yeah! Tyson's got it. <laughs> He's come back for the steal. Tyson, how do you feel, mate? What's going through your head right now? I'm very confused, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I called the wrong number. So, yeah. So it turns out... Tyson from Gola had dialed the wrong number, had no idea he dialed into a radio station, got coerced by our producers to play It's Wheelie Wineback Wednesday yeah. and then ends up winning It's Wheelie Wineback Wednesday. And the best bit, what makes it a Stephen Bradbury, is that he was against the odds and he was against two other people who had called up intentionally to play the game and he smashed them. He yeah. won the race. He got all the questions right. Yeah, the, before that, they they said Instagram and Snapchat and then it came back to Tyson for the win. He said Facebook, got it, had his Stephen Bradbury moment, which is why we want to go to the phones here. What was your Bradbury moment? I'm going to go to the text line first. Got this one here. Morning, boys. Pulled a Bradbury getting my job. Had no experience. Was up against two others with five plus years experience in the field. But I got the job based on my interview. Good stuff. They literally fell down the stairs <laughs> like Bradbury happened. <laughs> Look like idiots. Great Bradbury moment. This one here. DJ for my mate's 21st. No, the DJ for my mate's 21st never rocked up. So I hopped behind the decks. No experience. Got told I killed it from Sam. <laughs> See, it's one of those whenever someone says, I got told I killed it, did you kill it in a good way or did you kill the party and everyone left? <laughs> Are you missing out or something? Sure, Sam, absolutely crushed it. Hey, got another text here. G'day, my Bradbury moment was in football. I had a shot on goal to win the game after the siren in a final. I'm not a great kick. I was 60 metres out and got a 50 metre penalty to take an easy shot and win us the game. Great stuff. That's a proper Bradbury moment right there in sports and everything. 100%. This one is a little bit away from the sports section, but my mate entered me in a modelling competition. I don't get around that stuff. Ended up winning, though. Got told it was a topless shoot, so I politely declined from Daniel. Good on you, Daniel. You know what? It's not the worst thing to win, to find out you're good looking Absolutely on accident. Absolutely not. Hey, let's head over to Bowdoin. We got Max on the line. G'day, Max. What was your Bradbury moment? Yeah, so I was failing one of my subjects at uni and I was in a group assignment <laughs> yeah. and luckily the people in my group assignment managed to pull me up and yeah. I managed to pass the subject. <laughs> hey, great Bradbury moment. <laughs> great university Bradbury moment. <laughs> yeah, except usually the Bradbury is relying on others to fail for you to succeed. Yeah. You're, you're relying on them to succeed for you to succeed. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a twist there, but we'll take it. <laughs> Hey, the US presidential election is yes. right around the corner now. It's happening on the 5th of November. So the two candidates in Donald Trump and Kamala Harris are really ramping up what they can do to secure as many voters as possible in the last couple of weeks. Sure, and it gets pretty outlandish over in America. I mean, you think Australian politics is pretty funny. America obviously takes the cake and they get pretty drastic with what they do. <laughs> yeah, so uh, currently Trump is calling out Harris. Uh, Kamala Harris has come out to say in the summer of 83... She worked as a student at a Californian Macca's. Yep. Now Trump has repeatedly casted doubts about her burger flipping duties, <laughs> saying she's faking that she ever worked there. He, yeah. re he, rec he reckons it's all a bunch of bull honkies. Just a ruse. That she never worked at Macca's and she's making it up. And I think that Trump is genuinely upset at the fact that she might have and most likely did work at Macca's because it's a weird thing to lie about. Yeah, yeah. I guess he's probably coming upset from the point of, you know, it is that working class America. It really shows that you have integrity if you're working for a Macca's. Yeah, there's that. There's that. There's also the fact that between January 2023 and September 20th of 2024, uh, his campaign has spent $31,000 at McDonald's. Right. That's 46500 Australian dollars. <laughs> Just on Maccas. Yeah, decent chunk. Yeah. <laughs> that's, it. that's in just over a year. So I think he is genuinely quite upset that 
she might have the Macca's voters on her side over him. <laughs> Ronald McDonald's vote counts for two. <laughs> you need to get him on your side. So get this. In retaliation, Trump keeps saying he's going to go visit uh, the Golden Arches. He's going to go to a Philadelphian Macca's and work the same job that Kamala Harris supposedly worked back in the summer of 1983. Oh, <laughs> and he's going to work the French fry job for half an hour. God, can you imagine going to Macca's and going through the drive-thru and Trump's there serving your Happy Meal? What a strange sight. It's such a weird thing that he's so upset about this. Like, you know what? I'm going to go work at Macca's too. I'm going to one-up you. And I'm yeah. going to have it documented. His yeah. team keeps asking for Kamala Harris's documents about working at Macca's. Like, who cares? Yeah, yeah. Where'd you who work at next? KFC? I'll work there too. I'll take any job that you had when you were 18. I'm going there. <laughs> So each week here at Fresh, we have staff meetings. Yep. Right. And before we get into the nitty gritty stuff of the staff meeting, we kick the day off with our good news stories. So each week it changes what it can be. Some weeks it can be anything you want, work related or not. It can be personal, something you did on the weekend. Other weeks it has to be about someone else. Mm. So you have to give a good news story about what someone else in the workplace has done for you or done in general for the for the station. Yeah, it's good and stuff. congratulate them. Good morale boost around the office. You know, it is good fun. Absolutely. But yesterday there was a, a bit of a spanner in the works. Uh, the corporate fat cat decided... He was going to give his own good news story to each individual. And he never does this, so it was a little bit odd. I don't know if he was showing off to some new workers, but he, <laughs> he kind of started it being like, I'm going to prove to you all that I, I'm aware of what you're doing. So he went around the room and one by one did his little spiel. Yeah, and, and he's, as he's going around the room, he's saying very nice things about each person. And you were maybe third or fourth mm. in line. And he gets to you saying all these nice things. And it's followed by, he, he sort of followed it by saying, oh, it's hard to separate Tom and Callum. They both sort of do the same stuff. They've both got the same mindset here at work. Yep. Uh, they both do a great job. He's saying some really nice stuff. But because he had sort of launched me into your category of the good news story, by the time he got around the room and got to me, in his mind, he must have just thought, well, I've kind of given him a good news story already. So he just started roasting me. Yeah, so he's kind of dished out all of your compliments <laughs> intertwined in mine. And yeah, it really isolated what he had to say to you. And it was all just guns blazing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, well, I don't know what he does. He's always saying he's doing interviews, but it just looks like he's on his phone. Well, by the time I got just... to you, it was almost like he'd worked up a stand-up comedy routine and it yeah. wasn't anything complimentary. It was just, I'm going to, it's the roast of Tom in front of all these new workers and stuff. And it's one of those things where you think and you're like, oh, well, it's your close friends that are happy to roast you, right? And, and people that don't feel as close to you feel like they're not, they have to be nice to you. Yeah. So uh, that's that's how I'm playing it out in my mind. But no, I genuinely just think the corporate fat cat wanted to roast me in front of the entire <laughs> staff room. It's like a hazing ritual. <laughs> Were you stitched up in the speech, Adelaide? And it doesn't have to be necessarily a work speech from your boss, no. right? What about 21st speeches, 18th speeches? They are they are proper... I mean, they're just there to embarrass the person whose birthday it is. Yes, a girl we know in her 21st speech, uh, one of her friends who was giving it to her, may have revealed her... Her list of people, mm. if you know what I mean. Yeah, in front of the mum, the grandma, everyone, all these tame relatives. More importantly, relatives. in front of the boyfriend who then walked out of the 21st and left. Yeah, he was not happy. Later the... on broke up with her <laughs> after finding out about the list. The man was not happy with the stats presented to him. <laughs> the spreadsheet did not uh, concur. But 21st, 18th, weddings. So many opportunities to stitch your mates up in speeches. Were you? Maybe you were the one that did the stitching up or maybe you were the one that was stitched up. Give us a Buzz. We've got a special guest with us in the studio. It's Maggie from Kayla Mags, the drive home. Mags, how are you going? Hey, good. Yeah, that staff meeting was kind of weird, hey? Yeah, it was like a wild weird. time for you. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> it was a roller coaster of emotions, actually. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling after that? It was a bit uh, of a knock, wasn't it? Yeah, look, it was a, it was a late night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was, I'm crying yeah. all night, rocking in yeah, the corner. Yeah. In the fetal position. <laughs> now, Maggie, can you tell us, I mean, you've come on for a specific reason. You have a bit of a speech story. What happened with the speech was a little bit embarrassing. It happened at a wedding dinner. Yeah. Yeah, so my best mate got married and Tom was actually there. He emceed the wedding. This was a few months back. And her dad got up, who I've known like my whole life since mm. I was born, right? And he got up and he was kind of making this beautiful speech about, you know, my best mate and her now husband and everything. 
But then it was super dark and he kind of couldn't read exactly what was on the paper, so he kind of just started going off his own knowledge. Yeah. And he landed on me <laughs> and he just started roasting me. And he was like, oh, Maggie, you know, she's a bit special. Uh, got a lot of stories about that one. I won't share them right now, but... Oh, she's a bit of a wild one. And me and my dad were cracking up. We were like, this has just turned into the roast of Maggie here at my best mate's wedding. It went on for a, a weirdly long time. It was a so solid long. five minutes. It got to a point where I was like, right, the sun's down. I'm going to get my phone torch out and shine it on the paper so we can move on from Maggie. So it's just seen the little scribble of Maggie on the thing and thought, oh, well, I'm going to have to go on a whim here, see yeah. what happens. I think he was going to go through all the bridesmaids and be like, you know, they've all been good friends to Ellie. And then he saw my name and he... He was like, I know a lot about this girl. Yeah. I can really unload yeah. here. And he just went off. And I was like, do you know what? Fair enough. I've I can been... really ruined this girl's night. <laughs> yeah. I do make poor choices. So he... I was like, it's okay. He brings out Jeff Ross for uh, to settle down the comedy, do another roast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's head over to Christie's Beach. We've got Tina on the line. Tina, were you stitched up in a speech? Uh, yeah, I was. I was doing a speech for a friend's 18th birthday. Yep. And I was wearing a skirt, and while I was doing the speech, my friend's little brother came and dacked me. Whoa! <laughs> what? Dacked you during the speech? <laughs> How old's the little brother? He's not like 15, right? You'd have to be a, a little kid, right? Oh, he was like he was like 9 or 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, what did you do? What was... Did you, did you finish the speech? Did you... How, how'd you well, go about I, this? I, what happened? I had bike shorts on, luckily, and I'm very close with the family, so we all kind of just laughed about it, but my face went bright red. It was so embarrassing. God, kid, what, kid's the <laughs> centre of attention. Watching someone take the limelight, he's got his own comedy set in mind. Maggie, what would you do if, uh, if I just dacked the dad at the wedding for you when he was stitching you up? Do you know what? I would have thought that that was pretty, pretty funny. <laughs> I'd have been like, that's good. That's a good move. Time for the weird weekly wrap-up. The way yes. this works, Callum, each week on a Thursday, we reminisce about some of the stranger things we've seen around Adelaide. Yeah. If you've seen anything weird, chuck us a text, 0428 927 927, so we can include it in the weird weekly wrap-up. Exactly. Should we yes. get into Let's it? Let's get into it. Went to the gym the other day, and as I was about to leave, uh, where I go to the gym... Yeah. They have an L- Say gym one more time. <laughs> it's like Beetlejuice, gym, gym, gym. All of a sudden, I'm there just bench pressing. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to leave. No, you're not. <laughs> Hanging by the water cooler, chatting. <laughs> I'm trying to leave the gym right, and they, it's an elevator to leave. Yeah. Uh, to go top to bottom, and as I'm about to leave, the elevator door. Uh, is open and I'm doing the one of those that I'm walking towards the door and it's about to shut on me. Okay. But there's someone in the elevator. There's a group of them, but there's one guy in there who sticks his leg out to, to hold the door. To hold the door open. He sticks That's his nice. leg out. The arm. I usually do the arm if I'm going to do that, but he yeah. stuck his leg there. Maybe he just worked out arms. Mm, I would tie him. Yeah, couldn't <laughs> move him. Uh, and then I hop into the elevator, but he doesn't move his leg. Oh. So he just kept the leg there holding I guess the door open the doors obviously opened but he just held it there for another 10 seconds but there was no one else coming <laughs> so everyone in the elevator was kind of looking at each other thinking well what, what is he doing this for he was just doing a dynamic cool down you know <laughs> yeah. maybe he did work legs and he was just still stretching them out <laughs> any chance he can get <laughs> So, Caleb, I was with you, actually, when this happened. Mm. We were walking back. We, hit, we got some uh, breakfast earlier this week. Walking back to the station, and it was a hot day. It's been hot every day this week, you know, 30-odd degrees. So, yep. been wearing been wearing shorts, been wearing shirts, T-shirts, and I had these itty-bitty little shorts on. Right? Yeah. They're short shorts. And this guy's walking up to us, walks past us, looks me up and down, and says, Wow. How about those shorts? Mm. He catcalled me. Got the catcall. In the middle of the day. Yeah, Rundle Street. <laughs> in a very public place on Rundle Street. <laughs> I you got catcalled. You turned around and said, eat my shorts. <laughs> Did a Bart Simpson. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to eat them? <laughs> kind of liked it. <laughs> <laughs> when someone pranks their car, they like to pretend it's not a big deal at all. Mm. Yeah, you're allowed to underplay it a little well, bit. Well, yeah, you kind of have to because 
you know, if if you don't, if you underplay it, then in your mind you're like, it's okay, everything's okay. Yeah, yeah. The minute you start freaking out, everyone starts Everyone's freaking gonna out. Everyone's going to freak out. The mechanic's <laughs> going to freak out. Your parents are going to freak out. But... You need to say calm, cool, collected, like yeah. a cucumber. No matter what. And this is what my roommate was trying to do tomorrow. I was in the car with her and she was driving and she was telling me, she was like, I had a little bit of a scrape with the car. Mm. And that was quote unquote a little scrape. Okay. And I thought, how bad is it? You know, is a is it terrible? And she said, Well, when you get out, you can have a look and have a suss of it. So I pull over, go into the shops, I go out, have a look at the side of the car. It looked as if she was going 150 k's an hour and a few <laughs> Jackman's Wolverine had leaped onto the side of the car <laughs> and etched his claws into it. Jesus. It was like So it's not a little scratch. It was not a little scratch. She gone up against a pole. And it's, you know, when it goes all black because the paint's all chipped yeah, off and yeah. there's a huge dent and it had these lines through it and all the door was bent up. So it was a huge understatement to say. How a, did you not notice A this? little scrape. <laughs> yeah, I was none the wiser. I hopped in like it was nothing. And I thought, how did I not even say that? It was huge. <laughs> That's insane. We want to go to the tech slide in a moment. What did you crash into, Adelaide? Our, our boss, uh, Sophie, mm. She once drove into the side of a McDonald's going into the drive through The side of a McDonald's. So you don't mean do you, you don't mean like the menu of the drive through no, beer or like, anything? Like through a bush into the wall of the mattress trying to get into the drive through. Who wants a burger that bad? <laughs> I mean, we've all been there. <laughs> Jump out the moving car, I'll have a Big Mac. Large meal. Ignore that, I'll fix yeah. it up later. Bring Just get it, me the Big Mac. Bring it over to the car and the hedges over there. That's fine. <laughs> Got this text coming in through here. Uh, was driving through roadworks and cleaned up like four of those big pylons. Mm. Whoops. Four too many. <laughs> four too many. It's funny, I crashed into a ditch once. It was late and raining and I overturned the corner a bit. Flip my car twice. Wow. Whoopsie daisy, they say. Hey, Jeez, not a whoopsie uh, daisy there. I hope they're all right. Yeah, hope you're okay. Text back in and let us know you're okay after that. Got another text here um, from Rick. Backed into a Tesla the other day. Good times. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah we had a dude at work do that as well. The thing is with Teslas is that they're so, uh, they're so futuristic and advanced and there's so many sensors and cameras that even if you lightly back into one, I feel like it's going to be pretty high Expenses, damage costs. Yeah. yeah. I feel like you run into the Batmobile or something. This one here, crashed into my favourite fish and chip shop. The bond with the owners is no more. <laughs> you used to get free <laughs> chips and everything. So that's worse than a Tesla. <laughs> Running into a Tesla, fine. <laughs> Running into your favourite fish and chip shop. And be removed from all of your <laughs> benefits. <laughs> That's not what you want. <laughs> I like how they're not worried about the car at all. Nah. They're worried about no longer getting their free <laughs> They used to put extra chicken salt on mine. <laughs> now what do I get? <laughs> Got another text come through here. Put my car on cruise control, forgot to turn it off, and drove straight into my front gate. Wow. Yeah, big one. Yeah, no bad. Hey, just had another one come through here. Uh, I crashed my car into the roller door last week from Damo. <laughs> from Damo, yep. Hope everything's all right there, Damo. Uh, crashed into Apollo a year ago and running, uh, running for the city photo fell off. The hell does that mean? What? <laughs> 